I've talked about all kinds of planetary phenomena before, J1407b, Phoenix A, Ton618, but how about the biggest single entity identified in the universe? Well, this is a supercluster of galaxies called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. It is so wide that light takes about 10 billion years to move from one side of the entire structure to the other. For perspective, the universe is only 13.8 billion years old. Let's size it down a little. So, Earth is big to us, about 24,901 miles in circumference at the equator. That's roughly like taking a flight from UK to America five and a half times over, which is pretty huge. But based on the cosmic scheme of things, Earth is tiny. Even in our own solar system, we are easily dwarfed by the planet Jupiter, for example, which could fit more than 1,300 Earths inside, and our Sun, which could fit more than a million Earths. So, the Sun must be pretty huge, right? But that isn't even visible compared to the biggest stars we know of. So, the Sun is a G-type star, or a yellow dwarf, and a pretty average size on the cosmic scale. Some hypergiant stars are much, much larger. For instance, one of the biggest stars known is Stephenson 218, which is 2,150 times the diameter of our Sun, because all measurements of things far away are just estimates, so the size of Stephenson 218 could be far larger or smaller, or hotter or colder. But out in the universe, there are always other gigantic stars of a similar size or bigger. But while in diameter and circumference, Stephenson 218 is enormous, it's most likely barely any heavier than the sun, because mass and size don't necessarily correlate in space. You know, even more massive objects to consider are black holes, and in particular the supermassive black holes that typically reside in the centre of a galaxy. For example, the Milky Way hosts one that is about 4 million times the mass of the sun, which we call a solar mass. One, the mass of the sun, is referred to as a solar mass. One of the biggest supermassive black holes ever found resides in NGC 4899, and it contains 21 billion solar masses, and its diameter is the same as Pluto's orbit. However, even the most massive black holes aren't particularly large, since this type of structure is also the most dense entity in the universe. You can imagine cotton wool as a star, large and bright, but not dense at all, and black hole is more like like titanium, you know, it's very dense, it's very heavy. It's like the old which one is heavier trick, you know, a kilogram of titanium or a kilogram of cotton. They're obviously the same weight, but a lot more cotton is needed, and it would be immense compared to the titanium just to get a kilo. Nebulas, or vast clouds of gas that often condense to become new stars, also do have impressively large sizes. NGC 604 in the Triangulum Galaxy is commonly cited as one of the largest nebula. It is roughly 1,520 light years across. So, hearing all of this, of course, galaxies are huge collections of star systems, and all of the events I've just stated black holes, planets, stars, asteroids, comets, gas the list goes on. You know, the, the galaxy holds them, even in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. If considered as one object, it is about 100,000 light years across, and scientists struggle to characterize the largest galaxies because they don't really have a precise boundary or a cutoff point, but the largest galaxies we know of are millions of light years across. The biggest known galaxy, first described in a 1990 study from the journal Science, is IC1101 which stretches as wide as 4 million light years across, according to NASA. Galaxies are often bound to each other gravitationally in groups that are called galaxy clusters. The Milky Way, for example, is a part of the small local group that holds about two dozen galaxies, including the Andromeda Galaxy. Astronomers once thought that these structures were the biggest things out there. And in the 1980s, however, scientists realized that groups of galaxy clusters can also be connected by gravity, forming a supercluster the largest class of objects known in the universe. And that's where Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall comes in. Right now, scientists' best candidate for the biggest supercluster known in the universe is this Great Wall, although astronomers have spent almost a decade debating this structure. 
In 2013, a research team led by Istvan Horovath of the National University of Public Service in Hungary announced the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. The scientists have been studying this brief cosmic phenomena known as gamma ray bursts, which astronomers believe come from supernova, massive stars that explode and at the end of their lifetimes. Gamma ray bursts are thought to be a good indication of where huge masses of, well, stuff lie in the universe, because you know, big stars tend to congregate in denser neighbourhoods. Horvath and his colleagues found a gamma ray particularly concentrated about 10 billion light years away in the direction of the Hercules and Corona Borealis constellations. But it's a puzzle as to how big this structure came to be, because according to Horvath, this structure appeared to go against the way the universe had formed and evolved, and the principle it questions is, you know, Matter should be uniform when seen at a large enough scale, but the cluster is not uniform. And as quoted, I would have thought that this structure was too big to exist. Even as a co-author, I still had my doubts. This was said by John Hackler, an astronomy researcher at the College of Charleston in South Carolina, quoted by a 2014 press release. He then follows it with, There was only a very small chance far less than 1% that the researchers saw a random number of gamma rays in that location. No. As science is, it is just a theory and all we can do is learn. And on that note, thank you for watching.